Today we're going to be looking at the first ever 3D game that I made and actually finished. We're going to be getting all up in the guts of this game so you can see how magical and phantasmagorical Playmaker can be and how fucking stupid and lazy I can be. So grab your Black Lives Matter picket sign, donate a few bucks to a community enrichment program, and don't forget to vote for not Trump this November because it's time for... I made this as a birthday gift for my friend. I came up with the idea the night before her birthday and wanted to be able to deliver it the next day in the afternoon, so I knew I had to make this as stripped down and bare bones as possible. The game would be first person, and uh, fuck, okay, so I, I skimmed over an important thing here. I made this game for a woman I was in love with. Was or am, I don't know, but um, the thing is, we decided to stop seeing each other a couple of weeks ago. We had been together for over two years, and for a long while I was very convinced that she was the love of my life. I'm sure we're better off this way, as our relationship had always been in extraordinarily dramatic circumstances. The kind of things that make people kill each other and take the money and run in daytime television shows. So now you know. This stupid little game where you clean up dog piss and write a thesis paper came from the absolute bottom of my heart. Where the bioluminescent fish of my emotions dwell, and where the hydrothermal vents of my soul expel heat. Sometimes life gives you lemons, and you just gotta turn around and turn those lemons into a video that helps people better understand a visual scripting program for Unity. So first things first. This shit had to have fewer polys and there were tears left in my tear glands the night we decided to stop seeing each other, so I opted for the classic PlayStation or N64 style graphics. I used Cinema 4D to model out the room to match her real room, you know, the room that I helped her move into when she left her old apartment, the room where we shared so many memories filled with both laughter and tears. I got all the textures from textures.com and a couple of Google searches. I made a couple of custom textures in Photoshop for the laptop and for a pile of dirty clothes. Her dog's name is Bear, and just like so many other Latin American pet owners, we call him Papa. He's a little white and fluffy boy, but for the time given, his shape is too complex for me to sit down and actually model even the most basic version of. So instead, I went to TurboSquid or CG Trader to find a low poly enough 3D model of a dog that I knew I can at least do some modifying on to make it look like Bear. I just had to change the shape of his snout a little, you know, just like in real life except not half as bloody or morally corrupt. And I also downloaded a model of a spray bottle. Exported all these babies as an FBX, dropped them in a Udini like my heart dropped today when I looked out my window and I thought I saw her riding her bike down my street, changed the window textures to a missive and blew them out a little bit, added some bloom post-processing to make the room feel like a pleasant sunny afternoon, and got on to audio. Got some super sweet sound effects and music from https colon slash slash opengameart.org slash. Alright, so we're making an FPPC here, which means we're gonna want to give our players some agency. You know, what good is a game unless you're exerting some kind of power, right? Right, I'm my own person. Don't fucking tell me if free will is an illusion. I don't need to hear that right now. Make a capsule. This will be our player model. We won't be seeing it, we just need something that can interact with the world, which means we also have to put two of our favorite favorite components on it. Capsule Collider! Rigid Body! Now that Unity is treating our player capsule like a real physical thing in the real world with real feelings that really matter, we can start putting some Playmaker FSMs on this Mama Jamma. First FSM is gonna have a couple of Get Axis actions, each one getting an Input Axis defined in the Input Manager section of the Project Settings window. Pressing arrow keys and WSD sends information to these independently, then stores that float variable for each. The next FSM has our two Translate actions, one for each axis. These actions tell our player capsule to move based on the input in each of these axi- axi- ax- uh- axi- uh- I'm sorry. uh- axes. These actions tell our player capsule to move based on the input of each of these axes. Now you're probably asking yourself, Steven, my lord and savior, why the fuck are you using two of these translate actions? Couldn't you just use one since the axes are stored separately? And couldn't you have just put this action in the first FSM with the get axis actions? Yeah, that would be fine, but at the time I didn't know shit about fuck all and was just following a step-by-step -step YouTube video, so go ask that guy, okay? I was just following or- The next FSM is for camera movement. In here, there's a set mouse cursor to keep the cursor locked in the middle of the screen and to make it invisible. Then there are a couple of mouse look actions which pull from the input of each axis defined by the input manager. The X axis being tied to the collider capsule so the whole body turns left and right, and the Y axis being tied to the player camera which is a child of the player capsule, so that makes the camera look up and down. Our Papa model has a box collider, rigid body, and nav mesh agent component on it. There is one Playmaker FSM that controls everything else. Alright, now let's see how to endow this pupper with some sentience. 
It starts with an agent reset path, which clears any previously set path, just in case this isn't the player's first time playing since launch. Then a set destination as game object, set to the player, and an agent move, which together make Papa follow us around. Ooh, that's a good boy. It's a good boy. Yes, who's a good boy? The last thing is a wait action, so Papa only follows us around for 10 seconds before moving on to his next behavior. The next behavior is a send event that broadcasts to a global transition called Go P. Why not just send it directly to the state with a normal local transition? Probably because I hate myself. Who knows? So not the go P state. There's a couple of set property actions that turn the standing dog model on and the sleeping dog model off before setting off to the next state. So this is the state where Papa picks a pipple peckled pepper picker picks a random location in the room to go take a piss. First a get position action that gets his own position, then a couple of random float actions, then a couple of float add actions that add those random float variables to the coordinates of Papa's position, then a set vector three x y z to tie it all up together into a vector three, then a create option object that spawns a game object called waypoint at the vector 3 we just set. The next state is what makes Papa go to that waypoint we just spawned. There's an agent reset path just to clear Papa's mind, put the past behind him so he can move forward and get on with his life regardless of any hardship or heartbreak he might feel. There's a look at action which makes him face the waypoint, to look his future in the face and say, I am my own person, and although my past has created who I am today, I am not my past, because I am who I choose to become. Then there's a move towards action that sends him on his way, followed by a play sound action, which is this cute little retro sound that kind of sounds like a little doggy bark that says, I'm gonna go piss on your stuff because fuck you. Then in this last state, there's a destroy object action that gets rid of the waypoint and a create object action that creates a little spot of piss. There are some actions over here that start with a global transition called go sleep, but for that to make sense, first we need to take a little superfluous, maybe even pointless stroll over to our sleep timer game object, where for some fucking reason I decided to put the Playmaker FSM that has a random timer for when Papa decides to take naps. The first state is a random wait action which waits for anywhere between 25 and 45 seconds before sending off to the second state, which has a send event action that is a broadcast all global transition for go sleep. Yes, that's right, I should have just put this FSM in the Papa game object since it controls him and has zero fucking reason for being in a totally separate game object. So back at the Papa game object, that sleep Sleep Timer has sent us to the Go Sleep Global Transition, where there is a little state that tells Papa to go memes. An agent reset path, set destination as game object, an agent move that sends him to the pile of clothes game object where he will go to sleep. The next state is a couple of trigger events that tell Papa to go to the next state if he touches the clothes. There really only needs to be one of these, but they don't call me Steven Redundancy Town USA Scott Day for no reason. Once he does touch the pile of clothes game object, we have a couple of set property actions that are the opposite of those other ones we had. So this one changes his model from standing to sleeping. At the end, there's a random wait action which makes him take a nap from anywhere between 10 to 30 seconds. At the end of that, he gets up and goes back to his pee state. So the actual pee game object is just a plane with an image of piss on it, and it has a playmaker FSM on it too. These are being spawned into the world every time Papa goes through his piss action, and each time they go through these actions. First, an int add, which adds one to the number of piss spots variable, then a build string action with two parts. The first element being the text piss spot number, and the second element being the variable defined from the above number of piss spots, with an underscore separating the two. Then the string is stored into a variable called piss spot number name. Then there's a set name action which names that piss spot using that string variable we just built. So you get all these game objects called piss spot number one, piss spot number two, piss spot, you know, etc, etc. Why do I have this naming system for the piss? Because it became a habit to make sure game objects that were duplicated were given individual names. Because sometimes if they had the same name, there were some actions that would change all of them when it was only meant to change the one of them. Uh, so use prefabs. Seriously, it's not too late for you. Don't make the same mistake I did. Learn to use prefabs and store game objects and variables instead of referencing scene objects. I just want what's best for you. I know your mom and I aren't talking anymore, but we both still love you very much and you know this has nothing to do with you. After the piss spot is born into the world and then named a unique name, it goes to a state with a trigger event, which waits for the player spray to collide with it. Once that trigger is triggery triggertized, it goes over to the next state, which has a set scale action to make the piss spot a little smaller and then sends it to the next state where there's another trigger event, waiting for the spray again. And then when that trigger roni gets trigunked, it goes to the next state where there's an int add action that subtracts one from the variable number of piss spots, and a destroy self action because like life, sometimes you totally feel like a shrunken piss spot 
and something got subtracted from your life, so you just resort to self-destructive behaviors. The reason it subtracts from the piss spot variable is because later on when I show you the FSM that controls the win and lose states of the game, you'll see that we need to count the number of piss spots in the room to decide when the player loses. The player collider has the spray bottle model as a child. I used to think about having children of our own, and you know, we talked about it here and there, but we're never really in a good position to entertain the idea very seriously. The bottle has a particle system on it, and in the first state of the playmaker, FSM, there is an activate game object action, which turns the particles off, followed by a get mouse button down action, which waits for the player to click the left mouse button. When the player does click the left mouse button, we get sent to the next state that has a play sound action that plays the bottle spray sound effect, with an activate game object that activates the particle system, and a little wait action that makes the state wait a second before letting the player click again, so that way the player can't spam click, and also maybe so the animation can finish playing and the sound doesn't start getting played over itself, I don't know. So I realize I haven't really explained what the point of this game was. Um, it goes a little something like this. Super Papa Piscreener Deluxe 30 no mokyo wa donbun o kansei sase rkoto desu. Shikashi, shui shite kudasai. Papa toyu namae no anata no inu wa hasiri mawatte ite, doko demo o shippo shite imasu. Anata no inu ga shouben o shisugiru to makemasu. This laptop has a Playmaker FSM on it, and in the first state there's a couple of trigger event actions waiting for the player to enter the little box collider around the laptop, at which point it goes to the next state. With the player next to the laptop, there's now a trigger event waiting for the player to move away from it, which would send it back to the first state, and an any key action, which takes us to the next state where the player presses any key. So at the next state, there is an int add, which adds two to the thesis progress variable, then a rect transform set size delta, which changes the x value of a fill graphic in this progress bar UI. This makes the bar fill up in accordance with the int variable. Then there's a play sound action that plays a typing sound effect, then a trigger event which sends the FSM back to the first state if the player moves away from the laptop, and finally a wait action that waits a couple of seconds before sending the FSM back to the first state, again to prevent spamming. And that canvas I just mentioned, it has a playmaker FSM on it too, with one simple look at action uh, to make it face the player at all times. To look you in the eyes and say, I see you, I am here with you. We are in this together. Finally, we have the game manager that dictates the win and lose states. This is an empty game object with the Playmaker FSM on it. The first state has a couple of set int value actions, one which sets the number of piss spots to zero, and one which sets the thesis progress int to zero. Then in the next state, there's an enable FSM action, which for honestly, I don't know why, and I have a feeling it doesn't do shit about shit, but I'm not really gonna spend any time or energy to figure that out, so let's just keep on moving. This state also has a couple of int compare actions, one waiting to send an event when the number of piss spot is equal to or greater than 10, and the other int compare is waiting to send an event when the thesis progress is equal to 100. So basically, whichever of these happens first dictates whether you win or lose. When there's too much piss, it goes to a state that has an enable FSM, which disables the player movement FSM, so the player can't move when they lose. Hey, maybe that's why there's that little enable FSM in that previous state. So if the player plays another round, this ensures that their movement FSM is enabled again. Then a set light intensity, set light color, audio stop, play sound, and wait action that sort of just sets the mood of the scene with some red light, stops music, plays a sad game over sound, and then sends to the next state where there is a load scene action that loads the main menu scene again. But if the thesis progress reaches 100, the FSM goes to the next state which sets a much happier scene with a similar set of actions, but also with an added UI image set sprite action that puts up a thesis complete graphic above the laptop. Then it goes to the next state with a load scene action that takes the player to the winning scene. I made a main menu where I basically duplicated the main game scene, but gutted it of all the interactive aspects, and then set a camera in the middle of the room with a rotate action to make it look around the room for some nice chill atmosphere. At the very last minute when everything was pretty much done, I tried making one change to the materials of the room and fucked everything up. It turned everything pink and I was just like, oh. Classic Unity, oh man, <laughs> you really know how to get me good, <laughs> that's a good one, okay, but really please, fuck, none of these Quora or Unity form responses are helping, okay, I'll just re-import the whole damn thing and overlap the pink geometry and you know, so ever, nobody ever noticed. When everything was done, I tried making a Mac build and sending it to her, but it wasn't working because I don't know why, and eventually I realized it would be easier to upload a WebGL version to itch.io and send her a private link. And she played it. Did she like it? I think so. Maybe. Did she like me? Yeah. 
Did she love me? Yes. Does she still love me? Yes. And I still love her too. Even if our lives have put us in very different places now. And if the other girls will take my pain away. Well, that about does her. Wraps her all up. Things seem to have worked out pretty good for Steven and that woman. And it was a pretty good story, don't you think? Made me laugh to beat the band. Parts anyway. I didn't like seeing them cry when it was all coming to an end. But then again, I know that this isn't really the end. I guess that's how the whole darn human comedy keeps perpetuating itself. Down through the generations, westward the wagons, down through the sands of time. Oh, look at me. I'm rambling. Well, I hope you folks enjoyed yourselves. Catch you on later down the trail. Say, friend, you got any more of that good sarsaparilla? Send me dead flowers every morning.